whenever we open our eyes, we never see what's there. We only ever see what was useful to see in the past. I'm Bo Lotto, and I'm a professor of neuroscience at University College London, and I study perception and how the brain makes meaning. Perception is basically a story. Objects in the real world don't come with a meaning. They don't come with an instruction manual. They don't tell you what to do. If you take a, a dark stimulus, it could mean an infinite combination of reflectance and illumination. You have no idea which. That could either be a surface that's under shadow, because there's less light hitting it, so there's less light reflected from that surface to your eye, or it could be a hole. It could actually generate the very same stimulus, but you have no way of knowing from the stimulus itself. So what happened through evolution is some of our ancestors would walk forward, and if it were a hole, they'd step in it, and they'd be selected out, whereas others would walk around. Those with the brains that walked around, they stayed alive. Whatever they saw, that's what we now see. We inherited their perceptions. So as those events and experiences build up, our story gets more and more complex. Now these stories can have two bases. Either they are things that literally happened. They are truly physically experiential, but they can also be events that happen in our minds. We can imagine. And what's remarkable is when we imagine something, it activates the same part of our brain as if we're actually seeing it. So an imagined perception is the same as a real perception. This has tremendous impact for thinking about the narrative that a culture tells itself. Being social is fundamental to who we are. If you're excommunicated from your group, you died. So it's hugely important for us to belong. One consequence of that is that we will come to see differences between people. But through the power of narrative, we can actually change those biases. We can tell a different story, and we have. For me, the best technologies make the invisible visible. And that will change the way we will see someone else. A boat is a beautiful example of that because it enabled us to discover parts of the world that we never knew existed other cultures that we didn't know existed, that changed our perception of what it is to be human. So the problem with very modern technology, and particularly digital technology, is we can't escape from the fact that our brain evolved in a body and our body in the world. And this creates a fundamental challenge for the social technologies, which are not physical, they're often not with people we care about, they're completely passive, and they're often unidirectional. So in my view, the future of technology is not to replace what the physical world is, because we'll never be able to do that effectively. Your brain will never be able to step outside its millions of years of evolution. The future is what I call being in the space between. Putting the digital world out into the real world, where it augments that world, it augments our experience with the world. Imagine walking into a room, and not just seeing the architecture and design of that space, but seeing the experiences that happen to that space. If we could tell stories in a way that truly engaged the brain, and engaged it in the ways that evolved to make meaning in the physical world, with interactions with the people we truly care about, in ways that are truly meaningful, then we have the incredible possibility of changing the way we perceive ourselves and the world in the future.